Engineering Paper.xyz now has a data table feature which allows you to work with data in a spreadsheet like way. So to start with it, you insert, click the insert data table cell, and you get this cell that works just like a spreadsheet. Now let's say I have some data, I have this motor data which gives me speed and torque, I want to do some computations like uh, power and efficiency. So I have this as an Excel file, I've already saved it, so I can click this import spreadsheet file, I can import CSV files or Excel files, let's import this Excel file. Um, so then I have speed, torque, and current. And it automatically pulled in that first row of headers as variable names. If it didn't have that, I would just leave those blank and not to add those. I need to add units here. So just like everywhere else in engineering paper to XYZ, it follows your units, checks your units, and uh, converts them automatically. Uh, let's do cycles per se uh, minute here. These are RPMs. The cycles per second automatically kind of handles the the 2 pi radians per second aspect of this. Uh, for torque, we're going to do newtons uh, times meters. And we just do units like we normally do in entering paper. I can enter them manually like I did there, or I can go to the units tab and enter them uh, like I go to my electrical tab here and do amps. And basically what's happening here, each of these columns becomes a vector, right? So I can look at what one of these looks like. So I have to do speed and just do equals to see what that is. It becomes just a column vector. And the nice thing there is I can use any of the functions that are uh, related to column vectors. So if I go to matrices tab, I have I can calculate min, max, range, count gives me the size of it, uh, sums, averages, standard deviations, etc. that I can do on that. So I can do anything I can do with a normal uh, vector. Um, let's delete that. Um, but one thing I can do is plot it. So let me get rid of this math cell. And I'm going to insert a plot here, and I'm just going to do a scatter plot. So I'm going to do speed of my x-axis, torque on the y-axis. So let's look at the torque speed curve for this particular motor. So this is for an electric motor. So speed, so let's give this as an ordered pair. So this uh, scatter plot's looking for vectors. So speed is one vector, torque is the other vector. Hit equals. And you can see my speed, it's in radians per second. Uh, it's done that conversion for me automatically, but let's say I want to put it back in the cycles per minute, so RPMs type units. So I just give my units, my desired units as an ordered pair here. So you cycles per minute. And then I also need to provide the Y units, which will be Newton times meter. And then I get my uh, torque curve uh, for this motor. It's showing it as dots, so showing each individual point. I can also plot this. I just add as lines after the ordered pair, and it'll plot it as a line plot instead of a point plot. All right, so let's say I want to do some calculations here. So I wanted to look at power out and power in. I look at like efficiency, which power out divided by power in. So one thing that's very powerful with engineering paper data tables is it makes these calculations super easy. I don't it views calculations as on a column by column basis. So let's do the power in or yeah power in first. So power in is going to be my current times the voltage. I know this is a 12 volt motor. So what I'm going to do is I just uh, make an assignment here. So I'm going to call this uh, P underscore in, so power in, and I'm just going to say equals. Now I'm going to use the names of my columns as kind of the variables here. So I'm going to do, but first let me do 12 volts. That's my voltage, and I'm going to do current. Okay, so it automatically goes through and does this row by row without me having to really think about it. So it does what you expect. It does the calculation row by row for the entire table. So that gives me the power in. Similarly, I'm going to do power out. So power out, a little more complicated. I need to do my uh, speed. It's going to be, basically this puts it into radians per second. So I do need to get rid of that radians unit to make the units work out. So I do speed uh, times and one. And I'm just going to make that one by rad to get rid of the radians. Otherwise, the, it won't be in a... The numbers will be right, but it'll have the radians hanging around. It won't be in a, a power unit. My speed times torque, that gives me a power in watts. Okay, and if I didn't have this radians, um, if I just control X that for a second to show you what happened, the numbers are the same, but it's just not in watts. So that just allows it to get rid of that ra radians there. If I put that back in. So times here. And so that gives me the power out in uh, watts. Okay, and I can keep adding these uh, uh, to my plot. So let's look at the power out on this motor. So that'll be speed, comma, power out, as lines equals, and that one I'll just keep the default units. So that gives me that power. Now, since these are vectors, I can see that the max is around 782, but I also can just insert a math cell here and say max P out, 
I take that vector and give me the max value in that vector. So my max power is 782. So I can apply all these uh, specific uh, matrix calculations to these vectors that get assigned automatically. Um, let me do one more calculation. We're going to do efficiency, which is our power out divided by power in. So we'll call that EF efficiency, like that, equals uh, power out and tab to get out of that subscript divided by power in, right arrow a couple times, times 100 just to get it in percent. And so that's my efficiency of my motor. I can plot that as well. So I'll do the efficiency curve here. So let's put that ordered pair speed comma efficiency as lines again equals, and then that will be a unitless uh, percent for the efficiency. So I get that over here on this third axis. Um, so I, you notice it's automatically adding the extra axes with the different units. So I have my power curve, sorry, my torque curve, which is straight line, my power curve, which power peaks in the middle, my efficiency curve, which peaks towards the higher RPM range. So we see we can plot these results and we can do these calcula calculations in a very intuitive way just by using the names of the columns uh, in our calculations. So we can use any functions in these calculations. But if we use the names of the columns, it does that in a row by row basis. Like, like we'd expect. Another common thing that comes up quite a bit in engineering calculations is you need to interpolate between rows of uh, tables where you're given table values at certain uh, temperature values in this case and it gives you uh, viscosity, absolute viscosity in this case. And sometimes you need to operate in between these temperatures and you want to do a linear interpolation between those. So this allows you to do it automatically. So it has this add linear interpolation function. So add interpolation function here. And I can name this function whenever I want. I'll just call it uh, viscosity, I'll just do VISC for viscosity, and I tell it which row is the input, which column is the input, which column is the output. So in this case, if I call viscosity with temperature, it'll give me uh, uh, the viscosity. So let's do an example. So if I do viscosity, let's say I want to do 10 degrees. So here's giving me error because I didn't put the units here. So I do need to put the units, degrees C. And that's, uh, let's put this in centipoise to match the units of our table. So that's giving me the values kind of right in between those two values. So in this case, it'd be the average since the linear interpolation. Let's look at a plot of these data points and the interpolation function. So I, here I have my temperature points, my viscosity points. So I'll do that as order pair for my scatter plot. Points, comma, mu points. And I'll convert that into the Greek character. Um, and we'll do this as points here. The units, let me, I want to do this in, so I'll give it an order pair of units. So for degree C for my X axis and uh, centipoise for my Y axis. All right, so I get those points in the units of my table. So let's plot the interpolation function. So that I don't have points for, it's a function, so I need to plot that as a scatter plot. So my X values will be T, temperature. My Y values will be the viscosity function called at T for each value of t, and I need to specify the range of t, so I say four. Again, in parentheses, I give the lower limit temperature, degree c, and I need to put the, the units here, less than or equal to um, our temperature. So this is a range of temperatures, all the way up to the max temperature from the table. And here I could just say, use the max function, uh, t points, since this will work, or just type it in either way. Uh, just showing you can use functions for these limits. Hit equals. So now I see the it's, it's putting on two different y axes. So I need to tell it the units I want it in. So again, I want degree C for my x axis units and then centipoise for my uh, y axis units. And then those line up. So now it's doing linear interpolation between all those points. So in addition to linear interpolation, I can do a, a fit to this. So I can do a best fit, uh, least squares fit. So to do that, I do add polyfit function. So I'm just going to do viscosity fit for this one. Just to, It has to have a different name. I'm going to do order, let's try linear first, uh, just to see what that looks like. And one thing I can do is if I add a function call, call this viscosity fit with just a variable that isn't defined yet, so t, it'll give me the actual fit that it added uh, to that data. So these are the coefficients that are in the equation. Now note, this will be the coefficients that when temperature is in SI and Kelvin, so that, uh, that conversion automatically happens. 
Um, so let's do, let's plot this. Let's plot the fit. So again, with the parametric plot, so temperature and then viscosity fit called at temperature. And then it's for the same range. And I can actually just copy that in here. And I also need the same unit conversion. So I'll just copy that all in here. Control C, Control V, since that'll all be the same. So this is a linear fit. It obviously isn't uh, very good for this data. But I can up the order of this. So I hit the up button here. And I can have a second order and a third order. Now for this data, a polynomial fit it's probably not the best approach. It's overfitting the data. So here I'd use the linear interpolation, but I just want to show you the polynomial fit capability. Uh, that makes it pretty easy to do a polynomial fit. We can see that equation is updating for the additional orders of the temperature. Finally, let's make a new sheet here. I want to show you how you can kind of populate a table with some initial values pretty easily. So I create a table and I can obviously type in the values, type in the units. But one function that's pretty useful is this range function. So if I call it with one argument, it's very similar to a range function in Python if you're familiar with that. So if I call it with range 10 and hit equals, so that's going to fill the table with those values. I can't edit those. It's defined by this equation. So right now this isn't assigned to a variable. It just fills this column. So I can't access it unless I give it a variable name. When I insert before this function, I do need to put a space first, then I'll do index, otherwise it combines it with the function name. And I say index equals, and so now this is called index. So if I look at index equals, that becomes the vector like we're familiar with. And then this range function, if I give it uh, two inputs, that gives a start and end. So negative 10 to 10, we'll go from negative 10 to 10, the, uh, the increment of one, or I can do 0 to 10, and I want to do 0.1 increment, I can do comma 0.1. And that allows me to kind of initially populate the table, and I can do calculations based off that. So index um, squared to the 2 equals, and that gives me the square of all those. And again, um, I can give that a name as well, so I can use that in other calculations. So the only way I can I can make an expression say equals that will fill the column. If I want to use that in other expressions, I do have to assign it to a name. You can also export the data. So I can hit export as CSV, or I can do copy the data to the clipboard, bring this over to Excel, and then do Control V to paste that data. So it's easy to get the data in and out through uh, spreadsheet formats as input and through CSV export or copy and paste export. So data tables are a powerful tool in engineering paper to work with uh, columnar data um, and larger data sets and to do statistical calculations such as averages and standard deviations. So in an, but again, just like everything else in engineering paper XYZ makes it easy to plot and also easy to work with units uh, in your calculations.